This Sunday. This is Scotty Gossip. So this is the song he recorded for us. Every yeah, Sunday, Sunday, side by side at the microphone for the green light to the speed trap. Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gasp and mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrilled to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing a certain disaster as they shake hands with the devil. All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the Wizards of Speed and the live feed, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC. Take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all day parking includes pit Sunday. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. All right, we're rocking. It's Sunday afternoon. Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only. Automotive Talk Show with your host, Ray Guarino, and not Chris Switzer. Filling in for Chris, who's on a uh, Florida junket, is Matt Goban, Brian. Brian, you with us? I'm here. Hey, guys, what's going on? All right, and we have a special guest in the studio today. We have none other than one of our new favorite YouTube phen- phenoms, Wrenching with Kenny. Kenny, and, uh, and she's hiding from the camera, but we have Kenny's daughter in the studio, too. We snuck her in. And I figured we'd open it up with a little Metallica. Exactly. <laughs> so, now that we got that out of the way. Oh, thanks for having me. Kenny, it's a pleasure to have you in. As people don't know, well, they do know because I talk about it all the time. And we just mentioned, I watch YouTube like TV. That is yep. TV for me. So, when you watch certain contents, other channels that would fit with your liking kind of pop up yes. you know so i don't get many there are a few tool things but not as many as i'd like but there were some car repair and that's where you came in and i said hey who is this guy and uh you know fast forward to today you're in the studio and, <laughs> and we're gonna talk cars yes we are so yeah i came up to visit my mom so and my kids excellent that's good yeah that's uh yeah because now you're out of state and uh yep. You know, we don't always usually we don't always get to get our friends like Brian been friends with Brian for a while, but he hasn't been in the studio yet. We haven't uh, been able to, you know, lay hands on each other <laughs> for that stuff. Yet. So it, it doesn't always work. But in this age yep. now, we can do it this way. We can do it virtually. We can do it with the computer, which is great. Uh, but it's always nice when you get to meet people and have them in the studio. So, yes, it is. Definitely. So you've been uh, how long have you been into cars since I was a child? Yep, I think we all qualify for that one. As a as a little kid, you know, I used to look at the car's headlights coming down the road and try to figure out what car it was, and which was weird because my parents were never into cars. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, my dad could fix cars, but you know, his own cars, but he was never into cars. Okay, it's funny how stuff ch- jumps a generation, you know, sometimes or two generations, mm-hmm. uh, and that's you know, well, Brian, you were in the same boat, right? I mean, you were kind of a self proclaimed. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, like I said, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, my dad wasn't into cars or really anybody in the family that way. Uh, And that's all I've done since I could take something apart and try to figure out how to put it back together. So it's kind of weird how that works. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went the other route. You uh, you dealt well, you did you had your dealership time. So that was certainly, you know you know, the hardcore, I mean, you know, or dealership, I never worked in a dealership. And uh, not that I, I think I could have, I could have probably adapted pretty well, you know, it definitely has its ups and downs. I mean, yeah, it, it was a good experience. Yeah, for 21 years. That's right. You're a dealership guy, too. Yeah. But I'd have to be in the dealership. Like now when I go into a shop, and I say, Oh, I, I, I couldn't work in the shop. I couldn't even, you know, I don't want to drop my car off in the shop. Yep. I would be like the good wrench guy. You know, I want like the metal bench and I want to, you know, I, I work neat is I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to get at. So, 
Uh, that would have been my I, dealership model. I don't know about you, Kenny, but for me, you know, I, I was in a dealership for over 20 years and, but there was a lot of politics and there were people that either you played the game or you didn't play the game. Yes. And unfortunately that's the way it was in that environment. Um, and you know, as long as you were good at what you did, they kind of left you around alone because you were the moneymaker and, um, some guys can handle it and some guys can't. And it's, you know, like I said, I saw a lot of people come and go <laughs> during that time period. Yeah. It became a revolving door. You'd see, you had always had those people that were the favorites and that got fed. And then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and then you had those guys like us that just did our job and we did it well. And we always got the problem cars. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, the, the one thing about the one thing about the dealer, you always had to play that you didn't know what you knew, because if you knew what you knew, you got the hardest stuff instead yeah. of the gravy. But uh, it all works out. And, and actually, for your case, it it builds you into doing what you do now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it gives you a lot of throws a lot of stuff at you. You have a lot of a lot of learning. And uh, then you know how to fix a car. And some people bring it to you and say, hey, I've had it to seven other guys. And what's wrong? Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Right. And I, I mean, it was a great experience. I, I wouldn't pass it up for the world. Um, but, you know, when your time comes, your time comes, and I was done. Mm. Yep. Kenny, I want to throw something out to you that I've uh, I've yelled it at the TV screen, but you didn't hear me when I when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, uh, you know, we all deal with this, where we get parts to put on the car, and we mm -hmm. buy new parts. So I think Brian knows where I'm going, because through our, the other show, the Play and Traffic show we do, everybody's kind of picked up on this it was something that i'll, I'll show you it was something that actually joe uh our last co my last co-host joe had um he championed it let me bring it over here I'll, I'll just play it and you'll hear joe say it guys we all know what new spells never, never ever work that's right <laughs> so and you said it many times like this is a new part and you've had trouble with new parts yeah. so now if you want to keep that rolling on you can you can spread it through your part of the country because everybody else has adopted it right brian it's kind of a I've, I've used it a lot of times when I walk into shops and they said, hey, we put this new part on and we still have the same problem. And I say, well, you know what new stands for? And they just kind of give me that look and they're like, wow, you're that's right. So they're like, yeah, I never thought of that. Like, well, yeah, right. And now more than ever, I've been having I've seen trouble with with new stuff, you know, just either build quality. Like, I don't know who they're sending this out to or. Yeah, starters and alternators have been horrific lately. Yeah. I just did, I made a video. I did uh, the alternator on my daughter's Hyundai. Right. And I had to do it twice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I mentioned that to, I know I mentioned to Brian, I mentioned to somebody else. And I was wondering, I want to, I want to see follow up on that. Like, is that, you know, I guess it's a thing with those cars, mm -hmm. but why? You know, why? What's going on with the rebuilds or, uh, you know, the, the remands, as we call them? Uh, you know, what's the end of that story? That's that's crazy. I don't know. I've been trying to get new. Anytime I can, I try to get new. And yeah. that that alternator, the first one, was a new. Right. It wasn't even a reman. Hmm. So what 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 was the problem? Who knows? Yeah. yeah, the one that was in the car, oil had leaked on it, right? From the mm -hmm. oil fill. I remember yep. seeing that. And then uh yeah, that was a, see, that was a good video because it showed the diagnostics involved. It wasn't just let's just change the parts, you know, load yep. the parts cannon and fire it. Let's let's find out why yeah figure out what's going on yeah which is really what that's more than half the half the battle uh if you want to find out why or talk to kenny and brian you kenny or brian or even if you want to yell at me you can give us a call at 516-572-7440 check us out on social media where we post stuff that we get involved with pretty much all the time it's motor mouth radio on the web which is kind of stagnant right now we haven't updated the website but on x <laughs> which is Twitter and um, Facebook. And on Instagram, it's real underscore Motor Mouth Radio. And I like Instagram because you can put, well, and Facebook, you can put like 10 pictures up. Right, right. I don't like being limited to four. I, I can't be in the constraints of four pictures. It just doesn't work for me. I know how to use Facebook. That's about it. <laughs> See, I use Instagram and then there's a little check. There's a little, a little button you can click that says upload because it's the same company. Right. Upload to Facebook. I said, that's how I want to do it. Okay. So, yeah, give us a call. Talk with the guys. Uh, you know, uh, there was also a, another funny video. Well, it wasn't funny for you at the time, I'm sure, Kenny, but how you were driving your daughter's car and got stuck with a flat tire. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, I was you stuck know? on the side of uh, of uh, I eighty five there in North Carolina. Got a flat. I picked up something. I don't know what it was, but I got a flat almost instantly. Sure enough, the spare was there. The jack was there. Yeah. No lug wrench. Uh. So it's like, you know, it's something you don't think about. It's just like. So that, that, that's my big thing now is make sure you have everything you're supposed to have because you never know when you're going to get stuck. Yeah. You know, just it was a fluke, but it happened. And you had just been stuck recently with that car, right? Right before that, there was an issue. That was the one with the alternator. The, that that's was the same, alternator, Same right. car with the alternator. Yeah. I was driving it around that day. Yeah. So, was- uh, that was uh, last week. Uh, you know, I started with uh, Chris about, you know, it's that uh, pumpkin spice season. So that means we need to start. <laughs> getting the uh, car ready for winter while it's still nice. So you're not out there and six inches of snow deciding if everything is good, you know, at least uh, plan ahead, try to be a boy scout, I guess, or a girl scout. It depends on, but uh, same thing happened to uh, me, uh, Kenny there with uh, my daughter's car. We had picked one up, used driving around, got a flat tire, pulled off the side of the road saying I could change it. And there was no lug wrench in it or lug nut, you know, no lug wrench, you know, and, you know, it was just like, these are things that we just don't think about until we need it. And, and you got to say, bite where, you. where does it go? You know, <laughs> yeah, well, know. Did somebody change a flat and then like fling it off the side of the road. Like <laughs> where did it go? The only thing I can think of is because between my daughters down there, there's what six grandkids. So somebody was probably playing in the car one day, took it out, oh, and yeah. it disappeared. Yeah, well, yeah, it went somewhere, right? No. It went somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Or you had a uh, – they got it all back together. There's so much in a hurry, and they just drive off. Yeah, because, and... I mean, how many times have you seen a, a, a jack or a, a lug wrench on the side of the road? I've seen it. Mm, okay. I've seen oh, yeah. It times. Okay. Um, the other thing that, that, that I've seen on, on my TV, which is kind of funny, Brian, do you have any, uh, any things that really – tick you off modifications that are done in cars that guys do aftermarket modifications <laughs> ray we only have an hour i mean I don't put me on the spot like this <laughs> just pick the biggest one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I i don't even know where to start on that because i know kenny has one yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> i'd like to hear kenny's the squad <laughs> the Carolina squat. Oh, see, I was going. I was going to say a cold air intake. Oh, well, that too. But the Carolina. I mean, squat. you've railed about those intake, the cold air intakes. Yeah, I, I went off on those for a little while. Yeah, because they, they don't do nothing for the most part. Right, right, right. Um, but the squat. That's that's stupidity. I mean, that's when they drop the back of the truck and raise the front. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's unsafe. Yeah, you can't see. It's I unsafe. Mean, so I, I just don't understand the appeal behind it. I'll tell you the truth. One of the things that's in, hopefully in my future, I have another car built in me and I want to build a gasser. Okay. But I'm not going to do a, a sky high gasser. It's going to be just like, you know, a kind of a raised. So, and that's the same thing, like being able to see. But if I have to, I'll cut a hole in the floor. I'll just look straight out. <laughs> <laughs> but again, there you go, Brian. Like, there you go. Uh, there you go. Cyclone, yeah. But a gasser is cool. quite different because most, most of the time yeah. the gassers are more level than anything else. Yes. Yes. I mean, I see these things down in North Carolina where, you know, the rear oh, bumper yeah. is three inches off the ground and there's five feet under the front bumper. One of the times, I, like people know my daughter is down there and, and uh, we're thinking about relocating. And one of the trips down, I was just taking pictures as I'm driving of regular cars on the road and a truck with a tailgate that's uh, not a tailgate. The bed was like half disconnected or half dropped, the straps holding it on. I'm like, yeah. how do these people drive with these vehicles like this? I, I it's. Well, South Carolina doesn't even have, have uh, state inspections. I know, and that's but, very that's even scarier. Yeah. When I was down there, I have a niece down there, and years ago when we were down there, I, I came back from a – I think we went out to get uh, something to eat, and I came back and said, hey, I'm seeing a lot of old cars on the road, like 60s Chevys and early 70s, and you know, not they're not classic cars. These aren't cars that guys are taking to a, a meet. These are just daily drivers, but yeah. what's with that? And they tell me, oh, yeah, Uncle, there's, no, there's no inspection. So at a certain age, you can just drive whatever you want. I'm like, oh, that's comforting. Yeah. <laughs> no one. And even if they do, uh, even if they do have a state inspection, uh, you know, it's uh, they just want the fifteen bucks, and you just drive it in one door and out the other, and you know, yes. nothing really gets fixed or looked at. So yeah. Brian is almost as regulated as we are here in New York, being in Maryland. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> 
and you know, you talk about that, but you know, my whole thing is when somebody has about 27 different lights on a car, you know, they have different colors, they have spotlights, they have a floodlight. I mean, we're just talking regular cars. We're not talking anything out and they blind you driving down the road or when they get behind you, but you know, they want to pull you over because I have an LED uh, flashers on my truck because it's not DOT equipped. You know what I'm saying? You know so I tell you what, I blame your favorite store for that. I blame Harbor Freight because everyone's <laughs> buying those <laughs> yeah. those 30 inch LED bars, a bla blazing light. You know? Yeah. I love Harbor Freight. I know you do. <laughs> I know. You know. And and I got to tell you something, Brian. I know I've told you this. One of the things that endeared me to Kenny was watching his videos early on. I saw that he knew how to move around a car. And anybody who works on cars and doesn't get hurt knows what I mean. There's just like a body language with the car that somebody who knows how to work on them has. And then I saw he used good tools. And I said, okay, this guy is bona fide in my book. Um, but Brian has the best story in the world about Harbor Freight. I, I gotta show you something. I gotta show you one of the best tools that I got. And I just got it from Brian just uh, recently. There's a custom, Wow. that's out of the custom shop. Now that, that doesn't exist in a lot of places. Brian, are we at liberty to talk about this? Oh yeah, that's the uh, quarter inch uh, ratchet, but with a three eighths head stuck in it. That's cool. But in a way that's, that's I'm long enough to be dangerous to somebody who doesn't know how to use it. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So uh, apparently there's a very short list of people who get to actually order these things. Really? <laughs> and I got on it. Well, yeah, because, you know, like said, you know how to use it or you don't, you know? I yeah, I got, uh, you know, like I said, I, I swap out the heads and that way, you know, you want that extra length, that reach, and you want, you know, like I said, with the three eights, but as long as you're not trying to, uh, you know, take a tire off with it because of that, uh, you know, it'll last and work. And uh, like, like I said, I only build a few of those. <laughs> Which is nice because in a tight spot where you don't have the room, now you have a thinner ratchet. And, you know, working on newer cars now, everything has gotten tighter and smaller. Yep. And, you know, I, I complained to Brian about that. We used to have one set of, of Allen drivers. Well, then you had to get the, the, the longer ones. Now you had to get the shorter ones. Now you had to get the stubby ones. Now you need the micro stubby ones. Like, how many sets do I have to buy? And then you got to get the ones with the ball end. And the ball end is great. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, Brian, tell, tell, um, uh, uh, the listeners who, who haven't heard it, but tell uh, Kenny about your your Harbor Freight prowess. Oh, you. my my Harbor Freight! I I stop by almost weekly with my collection sheet and route uh, and look for people that owe me money. Okay. At the store because they can't go onto a truck because they'll get tagged because they'll know they know that the that guy, that distributor will know that he owes somebody money. Right. And this way they still need tools. So I go hang out a little bit in the parking lot and hunt down the guys that owe me money. That's one thing I like about the uh, Harbor Freight. Brian has been in his, his personal vehicle at Harbor Freight with on the phone with us of doing the show. And he'd say, oh, hold on, I got to go. I'll call you back. <laughs> he spotted somebody and he just, he's about your size, Kenny. And he just walks up on these guys and like, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Like, where's you know? my money? <laughs> and so yep. Jesse James with the with the dollar sign and pay me. <laughs> and, and Brian has great luck. They pay, they actually pay him. That that's the hard part about his business too, is because yeah. you got to give people credit. I mean, you don't have to, but you know, it's it's kind of like a, a a given that that's what you do. Right. Right. But I'm sure you know you can kind of read a lot of people too and know like, okay, I can trust this one. Uh, this one I don't know. Yep. So Over the twenty years. Uh, with this, you, you learn to read people real quick. Yes. Yep. So, but, uh, so now my, it has, it's good and bad. Now my yeah. daughter and wife have Brian's number in their phone <laughs> because they just bought me a birthday present. Said, yeah. <laughs> tell me, he knows what I need. And they, and they contact them directly. Well, I'm going to need good. this ratchet. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's that is, cool. That is, that is, that is cool. really cool. It's, uh, yeah. And you know, like with the, with the tools, we all have, I mean, we, we could talk about this at, at nauseum. We all have, I was looking through my toolbox just the other day, talking to my buddy, uh, Kevin, uh, just about ratchets and said, you know, the original ratchets, my original snap on ratchets were like, I don't know what, 20 teeth. Yeah. So now they're 120 teeth. Yep. So I actually brought a bunch out and showed him, you know, the, the, the lineage. I have some old protos. It's like, click, click. Sounds yep. like a safe, you know, like you're trying to crack a safe. And yeah. you go in with the full quarter turn before it clicks. Yeah, yeah. 
So the, the technology has really increased to help the, the technician slash mechanic. You know, I don't think that's a bad word, by the way. You know, a lot of people say, uh, oh, don't say mechanic is an auto technician. Like, no, everybody is not an auto technician. Yeah. I, I argue that way. I don't, I don't care what people call me. You can call me a grease monkey. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just pay me. Yeah. Pay me. <laughs> you want it fixed? I'll fix it for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, you know, with that in mind, oh, yeah, we, it looks like we have a call. So let's let's go to the phones, go to the phone and say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Kenny and Brian. Gentlemen, Ray. hey, Ray, how are you? Very good. What's happening? I got a couple questions for you. Okay. So how was your show? What was the outstanding car at your show last week up at Whitestone? Uh, there was the Peter Cup Award, which was uh, it was an Eleanor reproduction, which was absolutely stunning. Okay. Uh, I went to the only car show of the year that I'll actually attend with my car. It's my friend show. I did garner what I consider probably the best trophy in the show, and it was a People's Choice Award. Okay. Because I believe if the guy's coming in and the car guy's coming in, like your car, that that's, that's the, a hit. That's a hit, and, and I actually got one of those. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it was it was great. great. Good time. Good time. Love, love hearing that. And, and so I had another question for your, your your guests actually. Two of your guests, Brian and the other gentleman. I forgot his name. What was his that's name? Kenny. John. I'm Kenny. Kenny. Okay. They were both um, dealership guys, right? Yes. All right, so my question to you is, <clears throat> last week I read a piece in Newsday about the technology, about conversations can be heard inside your vehicle. Now, some of my most private conversations professionally and socially have been in the confines of a car. Mm -hmm. So what's the, you know, what's the deal with these manufacturers with the technology of listening to conversations in cars because there's a microphone or two in the car mm. yep in a newer cars there is you know yeah that's something that we talk about as telemetrics and what the range is and you know you have onstar where if you're yeah, exactly yeah. if you're disabled that will send that you know it, it'll send the information and you can communicate without you even asking to do it so yeah i know where you're going bob it's um uh, how do you control it i don't yeah i don't, can, I, don't can you? I don't know if you can right exactly well, and well, you carry a phone, and that's the worst thing in the world because whatever I talk about on the phone, and the phone, I'm not even the phone's not even on, but whatever I talk about, or I have a customer ask me about a, a something, it's always kind of bizarre how it shows up on my search. Isn't so, it? I know my wife and I talk about that all the time. Like, hey, we were just talking about this. <laughs> Why yeah. is it on TV? Yeah. If, if you want, uh, if you want I to really. If you want to have a private really, conversation, you need a pre-75 car. <laughs> right. Well, right. And that's, uh, that is horribly, think about what yeah. we've said to family members and or, or other profession, professionals in our car. Yeah. And, and think about things that you've said as a joke that may not be taken as a joke. The things you used to be yeah. able to say and everybody say, oh, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, I do this, I do that. But, you know, everybody knows you're full of it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I thank you for uh, sharing that conversation with me. And lastly, so I've been reading the GM Authority for oh, the last year or so, whatever. Uh -huh. And I'm a union person. I, 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 I've been through negotiations. And they're telling us that, the, that these workers are, are horribly underpaid. Who, who can possibly ask for a 40% raise? over four or five years who yeah. who does that w <laughs> yeah yeah i know that's uh that's kind of ballsy it's that's that's ridiculous yeah uh, but, you know, the, but their contention fairly I, what i read bob was their contention was that the the brass the big wigs are making all this money off of our backs so we want more of it that's the which we've all said that listen when you work for yeah. a boss the boss makes more than you he's the boss yeah. you want the responsibility so yeah there's that argument could go on I don't, and UAW guys do pretty well, you yeah, know. From what I understand, it's a good union. I, I agree, and I and and now now look what happens. We have thirty plus providers shut down because these guys want forty percent over four or five years. They want a four day work week. I have a six day work week. I work doubles all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, in different professions, not getting into the specifics, different professions kind of lend themselves to that. Others are just nine to five, you know, 
you know, five days. I always worked six days. I always worked, yeah. even at another shop, I always worked a, a half a day on Saturday. You but, so, six so, days and then at home. Oh, well, forget right. it. Right. And <laughs> when, when isn't our Mako guide picking up a phone? When, when aren't you picking up a phone? Right. Oh, Brian does. Exactly. Yeah, that's Matko, not Mako. He doesn't paint. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 pardon, yeah. pardon me. But yeah, you, yeah. You, no, yeah, I know I what you apologize. mean. I know you're right. And it's, it's almost like a 24 7. Well, then again, on the other hand, Brian runs his credit cards at 3 a.m. Just so he can make sure he gets the payment from the guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's another great story. But yeah. No, I know. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I gave you so you guys so many gripes. Uh, so the, the suburban line is shut down and the Chevrolet Camaro line is shut down. Right, right. And what do you you know, I'm gonna have to look for something now. Not that I was gonna do it immediately, but it's timing is timing is everything on a new car purchase. Yeah. So that's true. I'm going to have to look someplace else now. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Well, keep us in touch. Let us know what you're thinking, Bob. Great, great program. Great guests. Have a lovely week, guys. All right. You too. Thanks, Bob. All right. So that was that was our good old friend, Bob. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, there's so much. You talk about I've always talked about telemetrics and now we're starting to see it where cars from the late 80s 90s are coming up for restoration mm -hmm. and if that car sat for 20 years what, and we've been talking about it on this show for 15 years will it be able to be restored and it all comes down to the electronics the modules and 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 that you know that that part of it the ecm and is that going to are those parts going to be reproduced right. if needed sensors and i mean now i think we're still okay with a lot of that stuff uh but moving forward you know, I mean, you, we can still pick up a 55 Chevy and, and put it on the road. I don't think you're going to be able to do that with a 96, you know, Mustang in the year 2050. I don't know. I know somebody that's um, rebuilding a Buick Riata. A Riata, nice car. Yeah. And he needs the heads up, not the heads up display, the um, the display that has the, uh, like, temperature control and radio, like that whole assembly there. Right. Where do you find one? No, yeah, another Riata. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's, yeah. that's what you got to do. And hopefully it's not bad. And like I said, unless you, I, of course, I've been away from the dealership for 20 years. And even back then, uh, I can't tell you how many relays or circuit boards at the back of dashes that we had to resolder because a, the parts just weren't sitting on the shelf and, or that when you said, Oh, you got a bad fuel pump relay. You didn't have another one to test. Yep. So to say that you had to fix it and hope that did fix the problem, because other than that, you're talking back then that was a couple hundred bucks. Today, I, I couldn't even imagine what the stuff costs, yeah. you yeah. know, for that car. And I worked on Porsches and Audis, so that was a little bit of a different breed. That wasn't your normal uh, Chevrolet with parts laying around. Right, right. There's a guy I watch it's called Maple Motors. He's in Tennessee. It's a used car lot, but most of his stuff is all hot rods. Okay. that people that, that they buy and you can tell the guy doing the videos doesn't really know the cars and he even said the guys before me they they run through them in the shop make sure they're safe to drive and i do the test drive and the walk around and he has a lot of information wrong but recently he's had a couple of 95 96 impalas i happen to own one of them the impala ss and the he was complaining that the the odometer on this car was flaky like i don't know why but it's not giving me any reading something's wrong or oh, now it's showing me like one and it wasn't incrementing and i knew what the problem was i fixed it on my car 20 years ago so i wrote him in the comment i said dude i said this was when these cars were mine was only a few years old i said literally you drop the bottom dash panel you pull a cluster out and you, and you get to the back of that connector and you just touch, retouch the solder connectors i said they had bad solder connectors from the factory yep. i said Bink, mine's been lit it's been fine ever since and um he was like, well, I don't know how many people are going to be able to get into that kind of a, a you know, a job. Like, it's about four <laughs> screws. Yeah, it's you know, not six, that hard. Screws and a soldering <laughs> iron. But, Kenny, it goes to, like, you did something a few weeks ago, which I, I showed this to people, and they, they're always amazed, using a test light to verify ground. Yeah. And, and you, know, you, you said it the perfect way. Like, people say, but no, it shows me when there's power. Well, if there's power, there's got to be ground. Yeah. So you just reverse the dopey thing. Yeah, loop yeah. loop the wire. That's, that's yeah. all you got to do. It, oh. and, and it's amazing how many people have a problem with that. I, I agree. I agree. Um, but those are the things that, you know, I guess, you know, I don't like, how did I learn that? I don't, I don't know where, I don't remember where, when I learned that. 
It was a long time ago. Yeah. You know, so it seems like second nature. So I understand that people don't, you know, don't think because they're not in that world. But I don't know. Some stuff doesn't seem like too far of a stretch. I don't know. Well, you know, as long as you have ground, a good ground, just not the wrench laying on the floor, your a test light will work. You know. Brian, tell them about that. Tell them like what <laughs> Brian's. I had a I had a guy, and one thing I do love about my job, and I love to help people. I like to be a problem solver. You know, there's a tool to do the job right. I understand everybody can't afford the right tool to do the job, but there is. But but I had a guy, he bought a test light, old school test light, had a bulb, nothing fancy, none of this digital stuff or anything like that. And he comes back and says, man, this thing doesn't work. And I was like, OK, well, maybe the bulb broke. So I changed the bulb. I said, it doesn't work. So I said, all right, well, show me what you're doing. And walked into the car and the car's sitting there and he has a door open and he hooks the wrench. I mean, he hooks the, the uh, test light to a wrench that's sitting on the f- carpet of the floor of the car. He goes, I have this to ground because it's hooked to metal and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I had to at least try to explain that he has to hook it to the ground to the car. I mean, you know, <laughs> this, just because it's hooked to metal, it's not hooked to ground. He was halfway there, but you know, these are things, you know, even the simplest, you got to understand how it works, but yeah, absolutely. You can't make that. <laughs> up. Not everybody's going to understand it. This, this industry is not for everybody. No, no. You know, it is for people like us. Yes. Yeah, for select people. Certainly not for everybody. That's for darn sure. <laughs> so I'll tell you what it is for us. It's the bottom of the hour. So we have to take care of some business. And I have to relate the fact that our WHPC weather forecast is powered by Pantanos with locations in Hewlett, Uniondale, Garden City Park, Freeport, now open in Levittown. Today's forecast. I think Rob had it right. Rain. Rain, more rain. And it's going to rain again. And it'll probably rain through the night. And tomorrow is going to be some rain. And I think Tuesday was going to be nice. So listen to the station Tuesday, like you should anyway, and you'll see that it's going to be a nice forecast. So bleak for today. Also, on weekdays, if you find yourself free, you want to listen to the Nassau Mix. It's the best of music from 2K through today, featuring hit songs you know and some deeper album cuts from artists you already love, with a focus on up-and-coming hits before they are hits. We're making hits at WHPC. Brian, is there anything that we might want to talk about for an honor group of the hour today? What do you think? We could do Chris's job for him? Well, let's see here. I was thinking about that, and uh, I thought uh, we get into the uh, check engine light, our famous check engine light. If your dashboard looks like a Christmas tree with all kinds of lights and you spend more time and money trying to cover it up or take the light bulbs out instead of getting it checked, uh, you could be one of our honor group members. Oh, that's a good one. That's uh, yeah, I, I kind of like that. That that's very good. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, Chris. I know more people spend more time trying to get rid of a check engine light by figuring out how to take the bulb out and then just checking it out. So, right, right. Uh, just you know, Brian. That's the thing. I want to. I want to do something like that with. Um, I was actually thinking about writing a, a chassis, a, a chassis, yeah, and on a group of the hour, and I said, ah, you know what? I ran out of time. I thought, ah, maybe Brian will come up with something. Who knows? We'll, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that. you had got me thinking when we were talking about all the check engine light and scanners and goodies and all that stuff. So that's been uh, sitting on the uh, back of the noggin today. Got it. All right. So with that, we're going to take our break. I'm going to play a little more music with Kenny in mind. And Kenny, the first bit I play is one of those little promo drops I was talking about. I don't know if you have, there was a show on TV called, oh boy, Dennis Pitsenbarger did the show. Um, They would bring a car in and they would, they rated them. You you brought them out to the West coast and they would rate it in real time on a lift. And they would give you kind of like a, like an estimation of what that car was worth. Um, Brian, you remember the name of that show that he did? Uh, I can't. And it escapes me right now. It was pretty good. They did it for uh, for like two seasons. Dennis has done a few things, and uh, now he's just drag racing his Camaro. But this is man. Uh, kind of... So we'll be back with more Motor Mouth Radio in just a minute. Keep it where you got it on ninety point three WHPC. <laughs>
Pitzenberger from Sticker Shock. And if you're not listening to Motormouth Radio, boy, you are lost in the smoke of the burnout. Make sure and tune in each and every week because these guys are exactly what you want to hear. Real car guys, real talk every single weekend. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services, 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available at 516-593-0920 or online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouth. Hey, Ray and Chris. Did you guys read my mind? Okay, I appreciate you having me on. Wow, you guys finally figured it out. Motor Mouth. This is great. No more foolishness. I miss my puzzles. You're a funny guy. I've been waiting for Sunday just to ask you guys this question. Our trained staff of two will help. Well, good afternoon, guys. I need a little advice. All right, so you got me to call in. All right. I don't know everything. You know, you guys are mechanics. You guys have a great show. Thank you very much. I come with a tale of... Of whoa and a warning for the younger guys. Chris is doing jumping jacks. He's getting ready. Ray is right behind me. Every time I get off the air, I think, Vote him out. Oh boy, they're never going to ask me back after that one. <laughs> yeah, this is a collect call. How are you? Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. Oh, I, I, I probably called the wrong number. I was trying to get a hold of Ray and I wake up screaming. So I'm very happy to listen to your good advice. Yeah, I want to know what the <laughs> is wrong with my car. You know, break it down for us car guys. All right. Uh, see you next weekend. Vote him out. I know you guys usually speak Guido, right. and now you're talking Pinsel and Yiddish, and this morning I happened to listen to the rabbi on ah. your station. So it's all, you know, I guess today's Yiddish then. Right. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Vote him out radio, 90.3 FM, WHPC. Vote him out. Hey, you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the motor mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM, WHPC. You might learn something. I play the air guitar and drums in the studio. I got to I got to admit. Yeah. Brian, that was a great clavichord you were playing. I don't, I don't know how it fit into the song, but it was really good anyway. I really... So, we're back. Motor Mouth Radio, Ray Guarino, minus Chris Switzer today, who's out on assignment. We have Matt Goban, Brian, pull it up the rear, and Kenny. Wrench with Kenny in the studio with us, talking about car concerns, 516-572-7440, if you want to get in on this. And um, just uh, having fun and, you know, doing, doing our thing. So, that was that. Where do we leave off? Um, I don't remember where we left off. We were talking about tool tech, I think. But I have to remember, and I have to make notes because I have to go home and write a description of the show to upload for the for iHeartRadio and for okay. Spreaker. The show goes all over the place. We go on, well, yeah, the, it's streamed everywhere. NCCRadio.org, it's on iHeart, it's on TuneIn, it's on Odyssey, it's on the WHPC app. And also, you can ask Alexa to play WHPC. I don't have that girl in my house. No, I mean, I won't let her in, so... No, she ain't, she ain't here at my house. But uh, Think yeah. about what Bob was just talking about. Exactly. You know? That's p- case in point. Yep. Right, right. So uh, Definitely get in trouble. Yes. So <laughs> one of the other things that comes up all the time that Kenny uses on his YouTube videos, wrenching with Kenny again on YouTube, to ch- you should check that out, is he uses a scan tool. You know, and then you typically, Kenny, go to your Solus or your Launch. Yep. But you have some others, too. You have now this new brand, this King Bolin line. Yeah, the King Bowen, which um, I believe they're interconnected with Launch somehow. I'm not quite sure. They reached out to me and asked if I would, uh, you know, use their product, you know, basically get like review it. And uh, I said I would, but I'm just doing it as a, I'll try it. If it's good, it's good. And I'll say so. If it's not good, I'm also going to say so. And that's kind of how we left it. Right. So. I know, Brian, we were talking about this Thursday night on Playing in Traffic, and I told you that King Bowl is now going to send me a scanner to check out, which I'm going to go through all the family calls. I'll take it down to the shop and, and, and have a ball. Because uh, the interface looked okay, but 
Brian, you had a really interesting, I was telling my friend Kevin about the, the, um, the modality that the scan that you had there with you follows. Maybe you want to talk about that a little bit, because that's pretty cool too, this macro scanner. Oh, the small, oh, the one that, uh, yeah, I mean, the, um, the Max Light. Uh, the nice thing about this particular one is it's a, it's a, a regular scanner on steroids. Because if you need a, to be bi directional going into um, uh, being bi directional, mm -hmm. then you can download the app for $22.50 a month. And then you can interface with the car. If you had to initialize or uh, program anything that you're doing, you have that technology. Instead of spending five, six, seven thousand dollars for stuff that you may never use or not need, this will do when you need it. And that's what I like. A lot of people get into uh, buying a scanner and they only use half the uh, the ability of the scanner uh and that's one thing nice about what we offer at maco pay as you go like any program on your computer or your phone you only use a small fraction yeah, of it absolutely. only the real geeks use the the, the the big stuff but i thought about what you were saying with that brian and i was telling my friend kevin about that yesterday as we were talking and then i realized why there was something about that idea that I really like it, but there was something I didn't like, and I didn't know what it was. I know what it is. Being a guy that likes to hoard stuff, I have all my albums, I have CDs. I like to have, I like to have and hold my stuff. And I'm thinking, if I had a subscription, I'd say, now I don't have the airbag module, or now I don't have the, uh, like, oh, damn, I feel like I was missing stuff. That's just my dopey head. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, but you know, all it takes is a push of a button and you have the most current and updated information there. And if you want to keep it, you can keep it and just pay the, the renewal fee every 30 days. But, you know, like I said, for, uh, you know, with you, Kenny, you see a whole bunch of different vehicles. You have a whole bunch of stuff that comes in at one time. I have, that's no, uh, you know, that's, that's perfectly to have that type of a scanner that will read everything instead of that. But if you were just uh, uh, on the weekend kind of guy or one or two cars, this is really good for guys at the dealership because okay. they only work on one car line. I send this one in for a reflash. You think you can help me with this one? Oh, we got our, well, I was just figuring, you know, unless you wanted to do the old paper clip, I know that doesn't really show up on the thing no, there. That's old school. On your shirt than it did on you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, of course I love the old uh, plug and play and count the lights. Yep. Right, right. This thing when it came out was like, whoa! Yeah, this I can. This. I used to drive around with it in my car, reading the data. Like, oh, what's what's you know what's a, a ECT? What's my map? The map sensor reading. Like, I'm reading the data. Like, this is so cool. I could do this. Like, as I'm driving. <laughs> like, but uh, the old brain master 2000. 3215. Oh, 32. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave the 2000 to Chris, I think. All right, right. Yeah, so 3215. You even have the operating strength from all tests. So, yeah, we talk about the lineage of how scanners have, have come from, you know, uh, from where they were. And, and it's the way the data stream is transmitted, too. Is that, you know, now we have CAN bus. Boy, I got notes in here from my Oldsmobile, and this is going back to the 80s. <laughs> but you talk about now CAN bus technology, and, uh, yeah, you know the the cars really took after everything else that's computer controlled, mm -hmm. and that's that's fast, fast stuff. Yeah, um, and then of course you know it's like everything else you get uh, somebody involved. You know, back in the day, this was a great little scanner, and this right here was a OBD two ABS. This was called a body shop okay. scanner because those guys dealt with ABS and check engines on wrecked cars, but. They realized the big guys realized, well, this was taking the sell away because guys would just buy this if they just needed something with ABS. Right. So then, you know, you they took that away and you all to get ABS stuff, you had to buy the big scanner. And that's again, that's why I like how we've gone to pay as you go, because you don't need all that information. I mean, if I was a technician today and I know that I'm not working on uh Ferraris or uh, Lamborghinis or even Mercedes, you know, right. 
Over. Why pay for all that information that you never touch? So, yeah, I agree with that. It makes sense. It yeah, makes sense. I'd rather pay for pay as I go too. To be honest with you. Yeah, it is because it's not every day that you're involved. I mean, like I said, uh, and like I said, a lot of guys will buy the biggest thing just to turn a light off and never use the function. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right, just to clear the code, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as I've seen people so. with hand tools and have no idea what they're actually doing. They just use it to clear codes. That's it. Yeah. Because they don't know how to do anything else with it. Yeah, that was, uh, that's another thing. Uh, we get into scanner stories. You know, I get guys that buy and they say, this doesn't work. And I said, what do you mean it doesn't work? And they said, well, it told me I needed an O2 sensor. And I put an O2 sensor in. I still have a code. And I'm like, okay, well, what did the data stream? Well, where are you? Re are you? Are you? Is it rich? Is it running lean? Is it pulling out specs? You know, these. Well, what's that mean? You know. So then you run into thing. And I've noticed. I've watched a few of your videos, and that's what I like. As in showing that uh, people don't realize or understand. Just because it says this doesn't mean that's the problem. And, uh, you know, when you, when you break it down and, and unfortunately you still have to diagnose the issue, you might even have to pull out the old test flight and make sure that you have power or ground. Mm -hmm. yep. So Absolutely. And then sometimes a test light is enough. You need like a, a bigger bulb connected to some wires for a better load, right? That's, yeah, that's... I've done, I've run into that before. We're yes. light a test light, but it still won't work because it can't, ha it can't carry the amperage. Right? right. It can pull a couple of milliamps, but it can't do, you know, amps. Yep. Or a larger load, right? And that's the stuff you learn through time, yeah. you know. You and know. even still, I forget about it. I'll, I'll do something, yeah. and it's like, you know, I realize that I forgot to test it another way, and you know, by putting a, like a heavy light bulb in there or something like that, and I realize that doesn't work. And I was like, well, dang, darn it! I was just, just about to put a window motor in it, yeah. you know, because everything seemed to work. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. I, you know, I still make mistakes. It happens. Right. What are you gonna do? So now that you've transitioned, we're, we're at the last quarter of the show, so we're gonna, I gotta watch double time here. Yeah. Now that you've transitioned and you've moved to a new place and you had to set up a home shop like we all have, yep. you had a tool issue where your majority of tools were in the regular shop yep. and you had nothing at home. Yeah, I had very little at home. I had a, I had one of those um, uh, Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh, you know, tool suitcases. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, you know, I broke that out, but then I went and I spent some money at Harbor Freight because also like a lot of my audience is do-it-yourself at home guys they're you know unfortunately they're not going to go on the matco trucks and they're not going to go you know seeking out the better tools yeah um and i understand that you know because they're on a budget so i wound up going to harbor freight i figured you know this is my audience you know mm. i do have the, the matcos and the and the, and the snap-ons at work but i figure for home i'm going to use this which is kind of funny i risk i risk f future retribution but our good friend uh <laughs> tony defeo from uh you know from um uh Uncle Tony. Uncle Tony, yeah. Uh, you know, you'll see Tony picking up a claw hammer to do an adjustment. And I'm like, Tony, please, God, at least get a, at least get a cheap ball peen. But hey, it works. It's going to you know, hammer, hammer, hammer. It's going to do the job. It gets the job done. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a claw hammer that way. That's also a seal puller. It's okay. You know, you're right. You're right. You, especially if you have a, a, a claw hammer with one claw broken off. Now it's a now. And you can tailor that claw to be a good seal. It's actually a lot of leverage. It's good. For getting off too. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah. It's it's funny. Well, now Mac came out with the new, those little pocket pry bars. We were talking about them Thursday night. They're only like four or three inches long, Brian. You probably have one right there. Not the screwdrivers. <laughs> no, That's wait. the pocket pry bar. I'm sorry. It looks it looks a lot bigger on camera. That's only about yeah. what, three or four inches. Yeah. Oh, you stick it in your sharp pocket. It, it, yep. This is the new. Uh, these are they have a three piece set. I don't have a three piece with us, but that's the straight one. Yeah. And uh, you know, most guys still like the uh, the old school pocket pry bars. You know, and that's why they came out with that because guys were still bending them up. And so this is just a little bit beefier, but it's about the same thing. Doesn't have the magnetic tip though. So, oh, please, the, 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 Brian sent me some of those. It's the little technician screwdriver, you know, the thin one, but it's got a magnet on it. I was working on my wife's car at the shop, and I picked that up to grab something, and just bringing it across the front of the car, it picked up a T35 or a T. Yeah, there it is. Brian's holding it now, like a T35 or T40 yep. Torx bit that I had just bought. And then like flung it, and I lost it in the cut. It's gone forever. Like, yep. 
that damn mag that thing is always picking up other stuff it's Ooh. actually if, if you look it's actually the pocket pry bar or the one maco did was um a little bit smaller than the than the old school the old pocket ones yes but that magnet is unbelievably strong it is yeah, for such a little tiny magnet it is unreal that is good yeah, when we uh, a lot of guys say when they uh, get in and out of cars, they'll come out and it'll stuck to the door frame of the car <laughs> when they lose it and so it's like forth. All the battery but, powered uh, lights that Brian yeah. finds like at night under under cars, people driving around with this weird <laughs> illumination. Oh, there's another two hundred dollar light. Yeah, there's a hundred dollar light. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy it's stuff. Pocket screwdrivers though too. You use them underneath the hood, and I've done it to myself. It winds up sticking to something standing straight up, ah. and you stab yourself with it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you accidentally put your arm into it or your hand into it. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, and that's the thing. Some cars, I like working on older cars, is there's more shelf space. Yes. You know, by the radiator to, to put your stuff. Newer cars, uh, yeah. And newer cars are all plastic under there, so there's really no place to put like a magnetic tray or anything. Right. Yeah. Well, Mac has some stuff. That You have the fender cover, right? That's There's a magnetic cover. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen yeah. That. That's yep. pretty good. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's. You got to see what you like. So, um, also with that, I want to touch on uh, diesel, right? You have a new uh, a new member of the family at home. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little kitty cat named Diesel. Found a little cat in the yard. Yeah. Dog said, "Hey, what's that?" <laughs> yeah. My 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 grandkids were running around the house, and they found this little kitten uh -huh. in the grass. No mother around. No nothing. So we brought him inside, and we kept an eye on him at first to see if mom was going to come back. Yeah. Mom never came back, so we took him uh, in, so you know he yeah. didn't uh, get exposed or whatever. Yeah, and um, yeah, no, he's doing good. And of course, we have Gigi, who's a pit bull, uh -huh. and she's never been around cats before, so she uh, was having a little bit of a hard time with it. But now she's she's gotten used to him being around, and he's he's a, we figure he's probably about six weeks old now. Yeah, she looks look small. Yeah, yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny. But yeah, he's a he's a cutie. He's yeah. A cutie. I didn't get into Blake brake bleeding strategies. I want to talk oh, to yeah. you about because I know you did a video on that. And that's one of the things that I've kind of become known for is like brake work and brake bleeding. That's kind of, you know, I have a, a, a Harbor Freight bag that's like stuffed with all the brake bleeding stuff because okay. not one, one thing doesn't always work on any vehicle. Right. You got to go through sometimes two, three, four, or, you know, hopefully you get a gravity bleed, which is nice, but not always. It doesn't so, always work. No. You know, but, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get that in no time. But we will, um, like I said, we do do, Brian and I are part of this um, plane and traffic show that was okay. Lou's. Lou left. He left the show how many years ago, Brian? Uh, uh, five, six? Yeah. Five? He brought me in as like a consultant, an electrical consultant. Because he says, hey, Ray, you know relays, right? And those that, that black science, that Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, <laughs> I understand relays. <laughs> He goes, well, how would you like to come on and just be like answer the calls? Because because guys, they send in questions about electrical stuff, and I don't know, you know, lose a welder and a fabricator. Right, right. I said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Well, you know, it's like it's it's like seven or eight years now that I'm there, and Lou has gone on to do other things. He does his show now on Wednesday nights. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Brian and I and Lewis are uh, part of the Thursday. And I'll send you the information. I'd love to get okay. you on. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll uh, we'll we'll play in traffic. <laughs> I do that all the time. I know. <laughs> it's to be fun. So, Brian, what else you got? What else you got cooking this week? Anything good? Uh, just trying to dry out. I mean, we we got all the the rain from that uh, storm that came through the the depression there, that the tropical depression, and it's moving out, heading your way. You'll have that for the next couple of days, and yeah, we, uh, we got it. Now. Try to dry out. Actually. Believe it or not, uh, I'll give a little heads up here. I am going out to Harbor Freight here in a little bit to, to round up a few people, and um, we'll see what that leads to. I mean, that makes so much sense because guys, when they leave a job, and, you know, Brian's seen this too, where a guy, you go into a shop, and, you know, hey, there's an empty spot. Where's Carlos? Yep. Or whoever, or Bill. Oh, yeah, gone. And you go to another shop, and you see, yeah, that toolbox looks familiar. I was like, you got a new guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk to him. Yeah, John Carlos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then you know who it is. So, uh, yeah, Brian makes some good scores that way. So, but the funniest thing. So, way, but, uh, yeah. on, so uh, Kenny, uh, how? what's your range of vehicles? I mean, are, are you uh, – 
are you doing stuff that's 20 years old or are you staying up with something that's 10 years old or even newer? I mean, are you just uh, all over the place? I'm all over the place pretty much. I work on whatever comes my way to an extent. I try to stay away from a lot of the higher end European cars if I can, um, only because yep. I haven't been around them enough. Don't we all? And um, But it seems like in the shop, we're kind of like a general repair shop and it seems like we get up to about a 2017 2018 type vehicles and we'll work on you know the gms the fords the chryslers the hyundais the kias the toyotas the nissans you know that's what you normally see out in traffic that's normally what we get in that's that's the common mm -hmm. yeah so but yeah that's, that's that's uh, kind of yeah like i said uh it's funny i i have guys that have gone on you know like i said they've left the dealership to say and they only oh, i only work on one car because that, that's all they've done and that's usually I, you can get away with that but you know some guys that had a toyota let's just say you worked at a toyota dealership and it was a toyota well they might have a honda or a ford and they're like hey why can't i bring my car to you so some of these guys get in trouble because yeah. they don't open up the horizon i just didn't know if you were specific in one line or kind of uh, anything that moved Kind of anything that moved. I want to try to get back into the older cars. You know, it's uh, I kind of got away from it for a while, you know, with the kids and everything else. And, you know, now that, you know, the kids are all adults and out of the house and, you know, we moved and have a house now. It's just kind of like I want to get back into that, into the hot rods and everything else. And I can mm -hmm. tell you've had a couple of good days like me because your hands are clean and so are mine. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> it's like they're actually, you can see the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because usually that dirt's embedded. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, one night, I was a couple of years, I was working on my, my car and I came in and, you know, I washed up, I having dinner and my daughter said, Dad, aren't you going to wash your hands? And my wife said, you don't know your father too well, do you? She goes, he, he, I, he washed his hands. Didn't you see him? She goes, well, I saw him by the sink, but look at his hands. And she's like, that, that, it'll take a while for that. that yep. A few days, that'll, I said, yeah, I, I said, as the flesh leaves. You know, yep, like, and that's exactly what happens. <laughs> grease goes with it. Yeah. Some of, it, some of it's there for life, though. I tell you that. Oh yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, there's some. There's a roadmap. There's some scars and some, some crazy stuff in there. So I love the rat fink stuff. Yeah, that's like that. Brian just put that in last week. We were commenting on your rat fink. Uh, oh, yeah. That's my car. That, that's cool. That's uh, that's that was uh, that's Ray's uh, goat there. So yeah. Um, yeah, Macro parted. Macro now, right? You own the rights to rat fink, correct? Well, we don't own it, but we do a lot of stuff for Ratfink. We okay. have, uh, we have that uh, actually. Like uh, we just had uh, the seventy Cuda. Nice, nice, cool. Oh, he's on the roof. Cool. Yeah, he's on the roof, uh, going and so forth. But uh, yeah, we we have a line. We have T-shirts, uh, hats, and all that good stuff uh, with the Ratfink. So we're one of the few that they allow. Thousands. Awesome. Yeah, we do a lot of we do a lot of swap. We show off our little car collections on Thursday nights too. <laughs> <laughs> you have toys, you know, you want to have toys. You, you know, it's, yep. you know, you never get you never get too old for that. No. So, yeah. All right, so Kim is going to be coming in in a second. We're going to have to be wrapping. Kenny, I thank you for coming in on your vacation. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, anytime you're in the area, you're welcome to come in, and you can always come in virtually with us. We we'd love to have you as a guest. I'll I'll uh, give you that info too. We'll set you up. And then we'll set you up with Thursday because it's, uh, you know, I love having guys in that I know, you know, are bona fide. It really just adds. And we're New Yorkers too. And we're New Yorkers too, is right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was, I like the stories. I like, you know, when you were talking about stories from when you were back, like in high school on like 684 and 84, I did all my motorcycle yeah. riding up there. So I'm very well versed in those roads. Like, yeah, hey, I know where he was. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's some good places. Good stuff. Brian, it was a pleasure. Oh, it was awesome talking to you and uh, good luck and keep making the videos and uh, stay out of trouble, you know, and if you uh, stumble across and need anything, Ray can always get you in touch with me. I, I already gave him your your phone number, your you know, your name, your number, and your email address. So Awesome. Brian, no problem. Text them or you yes. can awesome. call them, whatever you want to do, and he'll take care of you. So uh, that's it. That's good. All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll be back next week with Chris. He'll be back in, and uh, we may have Carl Anthony. I think he's due for a visit, so we may get Carl back in from Autumn Blog. Um, and now that Kim is here saying, what the heck is this? There's tools on the bench. <laughs> 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 right. 
So that's it, guys. Motormouth Radio wrapped. We're out for another one. Brian, what do I tell the people waiting for me to park a lot? And don't follow them home. Right. Unless you got a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> or not Mac Ratchet. All right, we'll see you next week. The Mac and Brian, Wrenching with Kenny. Don't forget to check him out on YouTube. Ray Guarino, Motormouth Radio, 90.3 WHPC. Out. <laughs>